This is the 5 minute guide to the USS John C. Butler, a destroyer escort of the United States Navy. Right, so first of all, what is a destroyer escort? Basically it's a frigate, but the United States Navy decided it wanted to be a bit special for a bit until they eventually went back to calling them frigates like everyone else did later on. Essentially, it's a slower destroyer sized hull with a weapons outfit more geared towards convoy escort and anti-submarine warfare compared to a fleet destroyer's high speed and torpedo armament, which is primarily used to defend the battle fleet and attack enemy warships. The John C. Butler was the lead ship of her class and a bit of a latecomer to the Second World War, carrying the name of an ensign who had been killed at the Battle of Midway. She was built in an incredibly fast time, from keel laying to launch was just over a month, although it would be nearly another five months before she was commissioned at the end of March 1944. As built, she was capable of 24 knots, which was suitable for her designed role, and equipped with both sonar and radar sets. Her armament was practically useless for surface combat, a single triple torpedo launcher and only two single 5-inch gun turrets were carried for these purposes, but four 40mm Bofors and 10 20mm Orlikon anti-aircraft guns, eight single depth charge launchers, a hedgehog depth charge launcher and two depth charge launch rails made her a surprisingly formidable anti-aircraft and anti-submarine vessel for a ship of only 1,350 tonnes. For the first three months of her career, this seemed to be a perfectly fine loadout as she engaged in convoy and training operations, then screened some troop transports and escort carriers, and then did escort duty on the assembled fleet carriers. All important, but decidedly second-line duties. At the end of September 1944, she restocked for another relatively mundane troop transport escort mission in the United States' ongoing island hopping program, gradually working their way closer and closer to the Japanese home islands. This particular invasion was designed to clear the way to retake the Philippines, and as the last decent-sized landmass between there and Japan, there was some more significant opposition expected, and three carrier groups had been assembled alongside battleships to protect the invasion from potential intervention by large-scale enemy forces. And sure enough, the enemy came, and all according to plan, the US heavy forces sank the giant battleship Musashi, as well as the older battleships Fuso and Yamashiro, alongside a number of smaller vessels in the battles of the Sibuyan Sea and Surigao Strait. The enemy carriers had been located, and Admiral Halsey's fleet carrier force headed off to deal with them. So, so far, so good, so boring for the USS John C. Butler, which hadn't been involved in any of these operations. So, as the small ground support force of escort carriers, destroyers and destroyer escorts was going about its business, you can imagine the surprise when suddenly, a wild Japanese fleet appeared! Four Japanese battleships, eight cruisers, and eleven fleet destroyers led by the Yamato herself came steaming in towards the invasion force, with no major American fleet unit standing between them and the tens of thousands of troops who had no weapons capable of so much as scratching a battleship. Worse still, the small collection of American naval ships were armed with depth charges, high-explosive bombs, five-inch guns, and a handful of torpedoes, hardly any better than the troops themselves. Yamato alone displaced more water than the majority of the remaining American ships combined, and her gun turrets weighed almost twice as much as the destroyers did. So, as the escort carriers rallied their aircraft and announced maximum crawl away in the exact opposite direction of the Japanese fleet, the John C. Butler and its other vastly outgunned compatriots revved up their engines, which were of course entirely inadequate for a fleet battle, and proceeded to do the only logical thing which was, of course, attack. Initially, the butler and the other destroyer escorts laid smoke to confuse Japanese gunnery, whilst the full-size fleet destroyers and the destroyer escort Samuel B. Roberts, which for some bizarre reason decided it also was a fleet destroyer, ran in for torpedo attacks on the enemy battleships. It was very brave, but it went about as well as you could expect, and the Roberts, along with two of the three destroyers, were sunk, although their torpedo fire forced the Japanese fleet to break off from overhauling and sinking the escort carriers. An unexpected side effect of the American torpedoes being significantly inferior to the Japanese long lance torpedoes was that the closing speed on the retreating Japanese battleships was actually really minimal which meant that the Japanese battleships spent a very long time running away from very slowly gaining torpedoes, whereas if the torpedoes had had the performance of a long lance, they would have just gone speeding past and actually allowed the Japanese to turn back and engage much sooner.
With apparently nothing better to do and the carriers coming under long-range fire again, the butler headed out to engage a full-size Japanese cruiser, because when you've got two little pop guns, of course that's what you do. It dodged and weaved against the incoming heavy shells until she was so low on ammunition that she had to go back to providing smoke cover. Amazingly, these efforts combined with the attack of the fleet destroyers convinced the Japanese that they were facing a much larger and more formidable force than was actually the case, and the entire Japanese fleet withdrew, saving the invasion force at the cost of a few, let's face it, easily replaced light vessels. The butler would then go on to rescue survivors from one of the carriers before returning to invasion escort duty and taking down a number of kamikaze attackers over the next few operations, including the invasions of Iwo Jima and Okinawa. After World War II, she was decommissioned until the Korean War broke out in 1950, and for seven years she then served as a training ship before going back into the reserves and finally being sunk as a target in 1971. That's it for this video. Thanks for watching. If you have a comment or a suggestion for a ship to review, let us know in the comments below.